patient that is newly diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, the first medication most of us are going to think of is metformin. Now, the ACE guidelines, the ADA guidelines, they both recommend metformin as a first-line medication for type 2 diabetes. But why is that? Like, why do they have that as their recommendation? Now, you may be familiar with the UK PDS study that compared diet to diet plus metformin and then also more intensive therapy. But when they compared diet to metformin, we saw a benefit as far as macrovascular events uh, and even all-cause mortality with the diet metformin group. But is there anything else that backs up these guidelines recommendation when it comes to metformin? So today I want to look at patients who were being treated with insulin and they had metformin added on to that. So let's look at the HOME trial. So the HOME trial included 390 patients, so a relatively small trial. Uh, all these patients did have type 2 diabetes and were previously being treated on insulin coming up to the study. And the researchers wanted to see what kind of metabolic effects and what sort of disease-related outcomes they would see whenever this metformin was added on to these patients that were already on insulin. So let's look at a few of the baseline characteristics. The patients in the placebo group had an average of six years being on insulin and seven years for the patients in the metformin group. The average A1C in both groups was 7.9%. The total daily dose of insulin was 64 units in, base, in the, the placebo and 62 units in the metformin group. Now take a look at the percentage of patients in the placebo group that were smokers, up to 30%, whereas metformin was only 19%. Now this is actually statistically different. Now that being said, I didn't include this on here, but the metformin group did have an average age of patients that was higher statistically than the placebo, and they also had a slightly higher history of cardiovascular events. So whether or not they balance it out, possibly, but it is something that is a potential limitation of the study. So the primary outcome was a reduction in micro and macrovascular morbidity and mortality. So what do you expect to see? You should obviously see a big difference, right? Because it's in all the guidelines, we love metformin, and what the heck. No difference between placebo and metformin. But before you go and yell at your old pharmacy school professor, uh, let's look at the secondary endpoints. So the patients in both groups did gain weight because we would obviously expect patients on intensive insulin therapy to increase in weight over time. But the uh, patients in the metformin group had a negative 3.07 kilogram difference. So three, three kilogram difference in that weight increase compared to placebo. They tried to keep both groups pretty standard as far as how quickly they were lowering the blood sugar and keeping that A1C on track. And uh, the A1C was actually still 0.4% lower in the metformin group uh, despite their efforts using the same dosing strategies for insulin in both groups. So what about the total daily dose of insulin? It was actually reduced by an average of 19.6 units when patients had metformin added to their insulin regimen. And finally, the macrovascular events were also reduced in the metformin group. Microvascular uh, was not different, it was not significantly different, and that is what we saw in UK PDS as well. But uh, in macrovascular by itself, it was significantly different, and we actually calculated a number needed to treat of 16. So we only needed to treat 16 patients with metformin to prevent a macrovascular event. So there was definitely some limitations in the study. Had a low number of patients that were enrolled, and like I said before, the baseline characteristics were not all equivalent. There was a few that were off. And patients also, especially at the beginning of the study, were not all on statins. They were on a pretty low number of patients that were on statins in the beginning. Uh, that number increased in both groups as the study progressed, uh, but they never got really anywhere close to 100%. So that could have played a role. But all in all, I think it's good evidence for the use of metformin.
and definitely makes sense based on this UKPS and definitely other trials that the ADA and the ACE guidelines would recommend metformin first line for standards of care. And obviously there's going to be contraindications to that, but uh, for just your average patient, newly diagnosed, metformin is usually our go-to. So let me know if you have any questions or definitely leave some comments and I appreciate you watching. Thanks.